Now, chapter 16, a description of Jambudvip. Pariksit said to Shukdev Goswami, O Brahman, you have already informed me that the radius of Bhumandala extends as far as the sun spreads its light and heat, and as far as the moon and all the stars can be seen. My dear Lord, the rolling wheels of Maharaj Priyavrata's chariot created seven ditches in which the seven oceans came into existence. Because of these seven oceans, Bhumandala is divided into seven islands. You have given a very general description of their measurement, names, and characteristics. Now I wish to know of them in detail. Kindly fulfill my desire. When the mind is fixed upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead in His external feature, made of the material modes of nature, the gross universal form, it is brought to the platform of pure goodness. In that transcendental position, one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, who in his subtler form is self-effulgent and beyond the modes of nature. O my Lord, please describe vividly how that form which covers the entire universe is perceived. My dear King, there is no limit to the expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's material energy. This material world is a transformation of the material qualities such as Sattva-guna, Rajoguna and Tamoguna. Yet no one could possibly explain it perfectly even in a lifetime as long as that of Brahma. No one in the material world is perfect and an imperfect person could not describe this material universe accurately even after continued speculation. O King, I shall nevertheless try to explain to you the principal regions such as Bhūgolaka or Bhūloka with their names, forms, measurements and various symptoms. The planetary system known as Bhu Mandala resembles a lotus flower and its seven islands resemble the whirl of that flower. The length and breadth of the island known as Jamudvip, which is situated in the middle of the whirl, are one million yojanas or eight million miles. Jamudvip is round like the leaf of a lotus flower. In Jambudvip there are nine divisions of land, each with a length of 9,000 yojanas or 72,000 miles. There are eight mountains that mark the boundaries of these divisions and separate them nicely. Amidst these divisions or varshas is the varsha named Ilarvrta, which is situated in the middle of the whirl of the lotus. Within Ilarvata Varsha is Sumeru Mountain, which is made of gold. Sumeru Mountain is like the pericarp of the lotus-like Bhumandala planetary system. The mountain's height is the same as the width of Jambudvip, or in other words, 100,000 yojanas, or 800,000 miles. Of that, 16,000 yojanas, or 128,000 miles, are within the earth, and therefore the mountain's height above the earth is 84,000 yojanas, or 672,000 miles. 
the mountain's width is 32,000 yojanas, or 256,000 miles at its summit, and 16,000 yojanas at its base. Just north of Ilarvita, Varsha, and going further northward, one after another, are three mountains named Nila, Shveta, and Shringaban. These mark the borders of the three Varshas named Ramyaka, Hiranmaya, and Kuru, and separate them from one another. The width of these mountains is 2,000 yojanas, or 16,000 miles. Lengthwise, they extend east and west to the beaches of the ocean of salt water. Going from south to north, the length of each mountain is one-tenth that of the previous mountain, but the height of them all is the same. Similarly, south of Ilarvata Varsha and extending from east to west are three great mountains named from north to south Nishida, Hemakuta, and Himalaya. Each of them is 10,000 yojanas or 80,000 miles high. They mark the boundaries of the three Varshas named Hari Varsha, Kimpurusha Varsha, and Bharat Varsha or India. In the same way, west and east of Ilarvata Varsha are two great mountains named Malyavan and Gandamadan, respectively. These two mountains, which are 2,000 yojanas, or 16,000 miles high, extend as far as Nila Mountain in the north and Nishida in the south. They indicate the borders of Ilarvata Varsha and also the Varshas known as Ketumala and Badrashva. On the four sides of the great mountain known as Sumeru are four mountains, Mandara, Meru Mandara, Suparshva and Kumuda, which are like its belts. The length and height of these mountains are calculated to be 10,000 yojanas or 80,000 miles. Standing like flagstaffs on the summits of these four mountains are a mango tree, a rose apple tree, a kadamba tree, and a banyan tree. Those trees are calculated to have a width of 100 yojanas or 800 miles and a height of 1,100 yojanas or 8,800 miles. Their branches also spread to a radius of 1,100 yojanas. O Maharaj Pariksit, best of the Bharat dynasty, between these four mountains are four huge lakes. The water of the first tastes just like milk. The water of the second like honey. And that of the third like sugar cane juice. The fourth lake is filled with pure water. The celestial beings such as the Siddhas, Chadanas, and Gandharvas, who are also known as demigods, enjoy the facilities of those four lakes. Consequently, they have the natural perfections of mystic yoga, such as the power to become smaller than the smallest or greater than the greatest. There are also four celestial gardens named Nandana, Chaitrarata, Vibrajaka, and Sarvatobhadra. The best of the demigods, along with their wives, who are like ornaments of heavenly beauty, meet together and enjoy within those gardens, while their glories are sung by lesser demigods known as Gandharvas. On the lower slopes of Mandara mountain is a mango tree named Devachuta. It is 1,100 yojanas high. Mangoes as big as mountain peaks and as sweet as nectar fall from the top of this tree for the enjoyment of the denizens of heaven. When all those solid fruits fall from such a height, they break and the sweet fragrant juice within them flows out and becomes increasingly more fragrant as it mixes with other scents.
That juice cascades from the mountain in waterfalls and becomes a river called Arunoda, which flows pleasantly through the eastern side of Ilarvata. The pious wives of the Yakshas act as personal maidservants to assist Bhavani, the wife of Lord Shiva. Because they drink the water of the river Arunoda, their bodies become fragrant, and as the air carries away that fragrance, it perfumes the entire atmosphere for eighty miles around. Similarly, the fruits of the jambu tree, which are full of pulp and have very small seeds, fall from a great height and break to pieces. Those fruits are the size of elephants, and the juice gliding from them becomes a river named Jambu Nadi. This river falls a distance of 10,000 yojanas from the summit of Meru Mandara to the southern side of Ilarvata, and floods the entire land of Ilarvata with juice. The mud on both banks of the river Jambu Nadi being moistened by the flowing juice and then dried by the air and the sunshine produces huge quantities of gold called Jambu Nada. The denizens of heaven use this gold for various kinds of ornaments. Therefore all the inhabitants of the heavenly planets and their youthful wives are fully decorated with golden helmets, bangles and belts and thus they enjoy life. On the side of Suparshva mountain stands a big tree called Mahakadamba, which is very celebrated. From the hollows of this tree flow five rivers of honey, each about five viyamas wide, or about eight feet. This flowing honey falls incessantly from the top of Suparshva mountain and flows all around Ilarvata Varsha, beginning from the western side. Thus the whole land is saturated with the pleasing fragrance. The air carrying the scent from the mouths of those who drink that honey perfumes the land for a hundred yojanas around. Similarly, on Kumuda mountain there is a great banyan tree which is called Shadavulsha because it has a hundred main branches. From those branches come many roots from which many rivers are flowing. These rivers flow down from the top of the mountain to the northern side of Ilarvata Varsha for the benefit of those who live there. Because of these flowing rivers, all the people have ample supplies of milk, yogurt, honey, clarified butter, molasses, food grains, clothes, bedding, sitting places, and ornaments. All the objects they desire are sufficiently supplied for their prosperity, and therefore they are very happy. The residents of the material world, who enjoy the products of these flowing rivers, have no wrinkles on their bodies and no gray hair. They never feel fatigue, and perspiration does not give their bodies a bad odor. They are not afflicted by old age, disease, or untimely death. They do not suffer from chilly cold or scorching heat, nor do their bodies lose their luster. They all live very happily without anxieties until death. There are other mountains beautifully arranged around the foot of Mount Meru, like the filaments around the whirl of a lotus flower. Their names are Kuranga, Kurara, Kusumba, Vaikanka, Trikuta, Shishira, Patanga, Ruchika, Nishida, Sinivasa, Kapila, Shanka, Paiduria, Jarudi, Hamsa, Rishaba, Naga, Kalanjara, and Narada. On the eastern side of Sumeru mountain are two mountains named Jatara and Devakuta, which extend to the north and south for 18,000 yojanas or 144,000 miles. Similarly, on the western side of Sumeru are two mountains named 
Pavana and Pariyatra, which also extend north and south for the same distance. On the southern side of Sumeru are two mountains named Kailasa and Karavira, which extend east and west for 18,000 yojanas, and on the northern side of Sumeru, extending for the same distance east and west, are two mountains named Trishringa and Makara. The width and height of all these mountains is 2,000 yojanas or 16,000 miles. Sumeru, a mountain of solid gold shining as brilliantly as fire, is surrounded by these eight mountains. In the middle of the summit of Meru is the township of Lord Brahma. Each of its four sides is calculated to extend for 10 million yojanas or 80 million miles. It is made entirely of gold and therefore learned scholars and sages call it Shatakombi. Surrounding Brahmapuri in all directions are the residences of the eight principal governors of the planetary systems beginning with King Indra. These abodes are similar to Brahmapuri but are one-fourth the size. Thus ends the 16th chapter of the 5th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled A Description of Jambudvip.